Hello, and welcome to another program of Painting with Tali, your art collection. We're going to do some floral, and it's going to be in this Grecian crotter. Um, I have the drawing already made out for you here. We're not doing a drawing lesson. We're just going to continue with just the coloring. So this is uh, one on coloring. And uh, we're going to begin with violets. I know that you want that crotter to be kind of, we're going to use some blue. And uh, we're going to use some violet about it. OK. So we're going to be glazing. That means when transparency is put on. Mm -hmm. So it's too deep, and it's been sprayed with our fixative, Grombacher fixative, the mist and workable fixative from Grombacher. Um, it's the right one to put on because then when you put on your moisture, it's, it doesn't dissolve. It uh, resists the water because this is acrylic paint. OK. See? Oh, for you seven lucky callers, you'll get a free print. Call the voicemail at 470-2659. And if you're one of the lucky seven, you'll receive a print. OK. We got more deep tone on that. Now, right here, I want to concentrate with yellows, because yellow is going to be complementary to that purple, so to that purple tone. So this is a play on colors. That's what I want to show you here. So that yellow, we want it tender lime. We want a tender lime about it. So I'm using a turquoise and yellow. Yeah, so I decided to go with these, this kind of lime yellow here because there's going to be some lights. I imagined some warm lights that will start with that. And then back there, we want more turquoise softness. And of course, the sponge always works wonderfully. Because what we are doing right now is we're staining. We're staining it. You know, if you don't get satisfaction in life, and if you don't cry out for, the in, for injustice, and if you don't cry out to be respected, you're not going to get anywhere. Every, in, in the arts, figurative art today and age is insulted. It's never really given. The artist in figurative is never really supported as far as the tax money is concerned. So I um, have, you know, 
put out this production, which is a documentary. This production is a documentary, and they won't recognize it as uh, to fund it. Um, so the State Council of Art here in this state, um, you know, they, they've seen the show many times. I mean, it's went out, it went out for funding and didn't get any money. And then, you know, one person, because of one lady, uh, she, saw, she didn't give it enough points so I can get, so I can get a fellowship. And I was so, so mad. I mean, I was, very, I was really upset because I see these other stupid shows that look like acid trips, you know, and they give it $5,000. So she was like, you know, she had very big saddlebags. She had big, big hips, so she had an extra weight problem. You know, like she'll never lose the weight, and that's the problem with her. Well, we all have different problems. The problem with me then and there because of her was that I'll never get the money. So we're not supposed to be talking to them, you know, because they don't even give us the right to talk to these people who think they know about art and have these hunky-dory jobs. As far as I'm concerned, they should stop the funding for it because the money is not going to the geniuses. But anyway, she walks out the door, and I had to get her back for destroying me. I mean, you know, for ruining my life, for crumbling my life in front of my eyes. You know what I told her? I hope you never lose the weight. And then you know what? It was like she pulverated into like a pile of dust afterwards. You know, I don't use any force. I mean, I don't use violence. Words are just good enough. But I was in pain. I was, I mean, I felt terrible. She, she, she ruined my, my, my emotional state. My hard work was not respected. I mean, this was ridiculous. So I gave her what she deserved. I don't feel sorry for it at all. That's the only way I can cope with it later on. Okay. Because I'll never get the money. She'll never lose the weight. So there. You can't have everything. At least I'll get satisfaction. Um, oh, these are, okay, okay, there's some kind of, okay, wait, 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 wait. Um, yellow. Um, okay, green. I need a hawker's green. I'm out of a hawker's green, man. Life has been difficult lately. Where is a hawker's green? I can't live without a hawker's green. Oh, okay, I'm making a hawker's green with brown and, 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 and green here. Okay. Mm -hmm. So this is, okay, I'm, on t I'm doing well, doing well on time and timing. The gods have had a hard time accompanying me today. They have abandoned me lately. Okay, so this is uh, uh, okay, so that is kind of uh, a darker purple or something going on there. I'm going to go get more of a reddish tone here. Uh-huh. Not reddish, but purple. Fuchsia is what I'm doing this with. Uh-huh. But that might not be exactly what I need. Wait a minute. Do we need this? So whatever art you do, you have the right to be respected. Whatever you do, I mean, however it looks like. Because it took your effort and ingenuity. It took your time. You know? Don't let any, anybody tell you that you're not worthy of the rewards that you deserve. Don't let them tell you that. No matter, no, no matter if they're considered to be an eminence in their subject. They don't know. When it comes to art, 
You can mud wrestle anybody. Anything goes. Look at the crap they put out there and call it art. Look how they gave $20,000 to somebody who put a, cru a crucifix in a bottle of urine and called it Piss Christ. You know, that's why the, Nas that's why the National Endowment for the Arts doesn't fund individual artists. Who in, who in the hell, I mean, a couple of critics or artists who are selected to, to judge who is supposed to get the money here. They really did a great job in messing it up for everybody. But anyway, the money doesn't go to the geniuses. We've proven that, so we don't need them. If you want to help the artists, give them health insurance. OK. Um, and then we want some kind of lights. I want lights. This is very much a Renoir, Renoir type of. Oh, one thing that I wanted to talk about is that uh, the best paintings, um, you know, we got the ones that are the most expensive on the, on the auction block right now, are the Impressionists of the 18, turn of the century Impressionist. Um, go by what, you know, when the camera, the photo camera was invented. Anything about in that time during the invention of the photo camera, the mechanical eye, um, uh, documenting light on paper. Those paintings that were uh, made in those, that period of time are the ones that are worth a lot of money in the auction block. And we're talking about uh, Renoir and Van Gogh, uh, all of those. You know, well, Van Gogh is unreachable. But you can get the prints, I mean, not the prints, uh, Oh, the um, etchings and drawings and whatever he does, or whatever they've done, um, those. Those are the good ones to invest. The thing is that the paintings that I'm doing are like these masters that knew how to compose. At the time, they were hated. They were insulted. They were told they were no good, that they were terrible, and all kinds of stuff. They always do that. But now that they're all dead and gone, and the material world continues, and they have to find a way to feed themselves. So then they say, oh, now he's nice. He's really good. Now he's worth the money, and everybody wants him. He's dead. Um, so the idea in the arts, which is a difficult career, is to be successful while you're living. At least I'm trying to get known publicly by everybody, and um, and so that's good that that you're known publicly, that they recognize your work. In this case, they recognize me every time I go out, which is good. Uh, which is okay. 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 Oh, uh, get some highlights there. Uh, we need some white up here. Okay. Um, some greens. Some greens. Now it's becoming like a mass of things. Okay? But that's okay. It can become a mess of things. Because that's how Impressionism is. Just light, dabs of it. How it's hitting the solids. These solids are flowers here in this case.
Okay. Okay, I want some of that other light there. Now I need some bright light. I want some of that light around there, peeking, peeking, peeking. A friend of mine, she was telling me some impressionistic techniques. And it's like you dab color on top of color. And you put color on top, you, un, you just get color on top of other colors. Sneak in color through color, through dabs of color. That's the impressionistic way. And so that's what I'm trying to do here. When acrylics came out, and when I, I bought my first acrylic set, I was about 12 years old, and, and there wasn't any books on, on the market on acrylic sets. I mean, on acrylics. And so I had to uh, figure it out on my own. Uh huh. OK. 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 So yeah, no acrylic books anywhere. And uh, so I do have that uh, experience going very early in it. Um, but I've been practicing all the time. And, and I started with, of course, canvas board like this. And then I've, I have a whole collection of my pieces. If you, if you um, need to, um, if you want to view my work, um, just call the voicemail. It's 470-2659, um, which are my you know, classical pieces uh, before I was, uh, when I was doing this type of work. Honey, I am too, I, I, I'm in an orgasm right now of painting. And you want me to talk? No. I can't really talk. I mean, I'm not making any sense. I'm blabbering. OK. Oh, there's this commercial, I mean, the, not a commercial artist, but he's, he's in one of these galleries. And he oversaturates. He oversaturates with, with, with with, uh, with color, oversaturates. Like when you put too much sugar in your coffee, it's too much sugar. So he oversaturates with color, or floral colors. You've got to administrate floral. You have to know how to administrate it, or it won't work. I forgot his name. I mean, I wasn't impressed with him, but you know. I'm, I wouldn't know his name if I was impressed with him. OK. OK, so I'm putting my eyes off focus to see where I need light. And I need something happening around here. OK. And up here. Uh-huh. Now, let me go with the dark greens. What do we have? Eight minutes. OK. Let me go with the dark, 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 dark greens. Dark green and brown, darling. OK, that's accenting that very well. It does need it here. OK, I think it does. Maybe not that much. OK, maybe here. Uh-huh. So this is when you are doing an impressionistic piece. I'm already, I mean, I, when you paint, you discover and discover. I'm, I'm too busy discovering right now. I can't really talk about it. Um, I just know that I think I need some purple here. Some purples. Oh, yeah. Uh-huh. OK, the shadows. This crater is like seated, seated on a table. 
and then the table has lights hitting it. And we want them smudged a little. OK. Now we need some white, some yellow to give it that spotlight of yellowish. in it. Those little spotlights that, yes, I think we're getting them. Uh-huh. Yeah, now we need, we need some spotlight of yellow near the neck here. Not too much. Yeah, and here. Yes. Uh-huh. OK, that's looking beautiful down there. We have five minutes. Now, what is, see, you got to unfocus your eyes. Like, you put them crisscrossy so it goes, like, unfocused. And then you can see your picture and know where you are missing depth and where you need to put some dark and whatever. So, oh, you can squint your eyes. Uh, you don't want to be known as a cockeye artist. <laughs> uh, so, so you squint your eyes. This is one of my teachers. He told me to squint my eyes, how to see things. You squint them. Yeah. Okay. Now. Now, you know what it, it's missing? Some super white angel's breath kind of flower shape, some white flowers in there. Let's see. Yeah. Some White ones? That messed it up. Mm -mm -mm. Don't want it. So th since things are kind of dry around here, I can erase. But you got to make sure that you're erasing with an area of your sponge that is clean. See? Erased it. Tali knows all the techniques in acrylic because he's the oldest one knowing about acrylics, big and bad. OK. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the most experienced artist in acrylics probably in in the world actually. <laughs> okay, I don't have to be modest, uh, but I I don't think the baby's breaths are doing it for me, baby. Now wait a minute. Uh, I got three minutes or something. I know, no, I know, I know. Kind of like daisy things. Uh-huh, kind of like daisy thingies. Oh, yes, daisy thingies. Uh-huh, daisy thingies, thingies are doing it. Uh, now... On this crotter, some warmth about that crotter. It needs a little bit of warmth, a little bit of warmth, a little bit of warmth and light about that crotter. Uh, yeah, but we got to blend it. Uh-huh. Uh, two minutes. Okay. Now, baby's breath around. But, but no, 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 no. It wasn't baby's breath. What was it? Oh, daisy thingies, daisy thingies, clusters of daisy thingies, daisy thingies, daisy thingies. Uh huh. Oh, 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 oh. 
One daisy thingy swinging here. Uh-huh. Might do it. Okay. Okay, okay. Now, now you gotta clean it. It's like a spouse. You're having honeymoon with her. She's already, she has to be a brunette right now. Okay. Um. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Uh-huh. What am I doing? I don't know what I'm doing. Okay, the gods are with me. They just came. All right. Okay. I don't know. Hold on a second. Deepy, deepy, deep, deep there. Yes. Deep, hollow there, baby, hollow. Yes, 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 yes! Yes, it was too much clutter. You have to let some breathing in your composition of, 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 of these things. That's what that other artist doesn't have. And they have a whole mess of his paintings like, he, like he's such a great thing. He's not a great thing at all. Darling, now it's fine. Now it's fine. I'm on a roll. I only got seconds. I only have seconds, baby. Oh, I hate that. I need, I know exactly what it needs now, and I got to go, so I got to sign it. I got to shut this thing off. I got 12 seconds on there. I got to hurry up, baby. It's only a half hour show. I can't do anything about it. Okay. T A L. I-98, and you see, darlings, it's gonna be me, the canvas, the cameras, and all you wonderful people out there in the suburbs. I'm ready for my close-ups, it's Mr. DeMille's. This is Tolly, signing off. Okay, I've been a fool for you, bye. <laughs>
Thank you for joining me again in another program of Painting with Talia, your art collection. Today we're doing a companion painting to another one that I did before that was Harlequin. And Harlequin was playing a mandol, a bandol, mandolin, bandolin, I don't know, a guitar, an Italian guitar that's oval. Anyway, this is Harlequin's girlfriend. Harlequin's girlfriend is Columbine. So she has a braid. She doesn't have a musical instrument. Her femininity gives her a braid because women are always trying to weave things, even their life. So it's psychologically very good to represent her with that braid that makes her the feminine part, the yin and the yang about the two sets of painting. Let me shut up and start painting. The background. Got to do the background on there. Raw Siena. Nothing like your teeth, huh? My dentist is not going to like that. Raw Sienna is my background on here. Let me get it. Uh, let me start putting it on. Okay. All my Harlequins have that background, the raw Sienna background. Um, the first Harlequin that I sold, that was sold, was sold at the Hilton Hotel in Caracas, Venezuela. And... Um, I think he sold it for about $800. And this is a Greek guy who had this uh, at the, who was renting out a, a commercial space and made it into a, a gallery. And he would bring art from different places, like from Brazil. He would buy art at one price and then, re and then retail, you know, sell it at another price, but three or four times what he paid for it. So I made a Harlequin one time, and he liked it. And he bought it. He would pay me cash up front, about like $200 at that time. I mean, that was about 10 years ago. And I remember when I did the Harlequin was when I discovered uh, the charcoal marriage. My charcoal, I set my charcoal with the fixative, uh, the Mist and Workable Fixative Spray. And that's from Grombacher. They donated this to me, so thank you very much. It's the perfect formula that sets the charcoal, whereas I can put my glazes. And glazing is the transparencies of color with water at the pigment. This is acrylic paint, of course. I'm an acrylic painter. And uh, so I have probably, I mean, I, I have experience in acrylics, probably one of the most experienced in acrylic, uh, because I been pain, painted so much, I have so much hours of flight in acrylics. Hours of painting in this case. Uh, so it's set, and, that, and the background is this oak type of background. Ocre is the word in Spanish. Uh, what is it? Uh, in English, I forgot. For the color type, whatever. Uh, I would like probably a little bit of orange about it. Because I know that my original, the boy, the male, has uh, in the 200 years to screw this back on. That's what I hate about this. I need an assistant screwing these things back on for me. Um, okay. Yeah, some orange about it. I remember on the other Harlequin, I didn't have the right ocre color tone. When I have a word in my head in one language, it's stuck in there, and I don't remember what the color. In Spanish, it's ocre. Harvest gold? OK. Uh, yeah, so I, I do want a little bit of reddish, orangish about that background on, on her. Columbine. Columbine, Columbine, or Colombina. Eh, me piace molto la Colombina. Ah, it's an Italian operetta from the 17th century. Arlecchini Colombina. A lot of costumes and all, a lot of costumes come up in this style. Okay, can we hurry up here? Okay, so we got the background. 200 years of the background. I hate backgrounds! Ugh. I'm, I don't know what's wrong with me today. I, I'm, I'm like, 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 like a match. 
you know, like you set a match off, you know. Uh, okay, finally, honey. Now, uh, this is the fourth painting in a row that I do. Um, the, uh, she has, her headdress is purple here. It's purple. Okay. With a little bit of blue. Okay. See how I evened it? The, remember, it is this spray that does the miracle. That's the spray that I use. Grombacher Mistin Workable Fixative Matte. The large can is 546. Without this, Tali Miracles cannot happen. Okay, that's what happened. Perfect. And uh, let me go on um, with the rest of it. Okay. Oh, I do want to conserve a little bit of this color. That's too much. For some blue here on the collar because these are boa, little ostrich feathers that she has a little neckline of it and um, it's just some purpleness about it. It helps you when you're going to put the, the white lights on it. Uh-huh. For now. Okay, for the seven lucky callers on the voicemail, if you want this print or whatever print, I mean, seven lucky callers get a free print. And you also can get free classes at the Metropolitan Library if you live here in Columbus in the downtown area is where I have the, the first Sunday of every month. Just call the voicemail 4702659 for any information on where you can view my artwork or see uh, or come to the classes or where I'm having a show or whatever I'm doing, you know. Um, that's area code 614-470-2659 for you people in Miami and for you people out in San Francisco. For you people in San Francisco, thanks to Enrico's Restaurant. I'm being brought to you by Enrico's Restaurant. They're nice enough to, to get me on, on the air, on their airwaves over there. They're very good people. Uh, now, um, okay, now it comes a time that we select the colors, uh, I hate this part of the harlequin, I really do. Uh, the colors of, uh, of the dress, because it's tricky. Um, we need a yellow. Okay. It's very, very tricky. You can spend 2,000 years concentrating. It's like a chessboard thing. Because you've got to put, uh, put the right color in the right place. But I remember I simplify it. I don't put the seven color colors of the chakra system of meditation, which is what I like to do in the mornings. In the mornings, I do my crunches, 
but I eat M&Ms in the evening and popcorn. So in the mornings, I have like a, a grapefruit, you know, to burn the calories because I'm not a kid anymore. I don't burn calories like a kid, but I want to look like a kid. The problem, without, the problem about not having a million dollars is that you have to look like one. So I, I, <laughs> so, <laughs> so in the mornings I do my crunches. That was my New Year's resolution that I would do my crunches every morning. So I've been trying to, and I've been slipping. You know, so I, it was 150 crunches. Now it's down to 60. Um, <laughs> and it takes me tw I mean, five minutes to do it. 20 minutes to think, thinking about it. 20 minutes to think about it, Tw five minutes to do it. Do my crunches. And, you know, since I'm not on a strict rabbit food diet, I'm not getting that small little waist that I want. I'm still at a, I'm still at a 32 inch waist. Uh, but I love eating. Eating is, is, is wonderful. I mean, I, 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 I like pastry. I mean, I like all kinds of stuff. I, 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 I like fruits and stuff like that, but it's not going to be fruits all the time. Okay. But these strict diets. I'm not good at these strict diets. Unless I have to go to one of these um, romance conventions where they're going to have all these glamour boys, you know, the Fabio people. Yeah, then I have to get really put together into shape. I don't want to look like chopped liver next to him. Okay. Okay, some orange. See, I'm trying to get all the oranges I want that I'm going to get in. Trying to, trying to, trying to. Okay, uh, that's about as much oranges that I want to get in there. Uh, let's get in some blues. Let's get in some blues. And uh, let's put another blue around here. This is the Harlequin. Is is this? This is the problem with it. I mean, you really got to know where you're going to place your blocks of color next to the right color and stuff, so that it will harmonize in the picture. Uh huh. So far, so good. Blue here. Uh, let's go with blue there. Okay, um, any more blues? Do we need any more blues? Do we need any more blues? Um, no. Have a lot of oranges there, more than blues, but that's okay. Fuchsia. Let's put some fuchsia somewhere. And then yellow and green, the next two, and then that's it. I'm not going to go with the seven colors of the chakra system of meditation. Uh, fuchsia. You see, that's the wrong place for fuchsia, actually. Green should go there. Yellow should go opposite. So opposite to that orange was a good fuchsia. Uh, okay. So that's the thing about it. All right, good area for fuchsia here, right? Okay. Okay, uh, any more fuchsia anywhere? Um, probably here would be fine, actually, yeah. Because when it's opposite to it, it's okay. You guys don't know what I mean. You guys are not getting it. 
It's too complicated. I know it's not really complicated. You just don't have time to explain. But for you people who do paint, you do know what I'm talking about at times. And there's some people who just get me. I mean, a lot of uh, painting is wonderful. Everybody should do it. Uh, that's why the classes are free. OK, any more fuchsia, baby? Any more fuchsia, honey? Do we need more fuchsia, baby? Yes, over here. Uh, up there, babe. OK. OK. Wonderful. And um, yellow? Somewhere yellow, somewhere yellow, yellow. I'm going to put green there, yellow here. Uh, yellow, yellow, green, and yellow there. Wonderful, yes. Oh, it bled a little. It bled. Clean up like that. Okay, we won't worry too much about it right now. Yellow, honey, where? Here? Uh, yes, yellow there. Um, green is going to go up there. See, this is the thing about the, the harlequin. You have less, you got to really have tricky choices. Got to be careful with your choices on where things are going to go. Uh, yellow, no, green goes there. Do we have enough yellows? We don't really. Yellow is a color that I like very much to be involved. OK. Yellow is there. Green, green, there. Uh, Green should be up there. Actually, yellow here. Then blue, then green. Then green. OK, hold on. Um, any more yellow? Any more yellow? Yeah, yellow here. This is the thing about the harlequin. It's a check. It's 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 um, game of chest. Green now. Green. Okay. Green is here. And uh, green is here. And uh, green can't be there. Blue is going to go there, I guess. Yeah, no other thing but blue can go there right now. Green is there. Green is here. Green is there. Green is here. Um, what's going to go there is probably, I mean, I can't, yellow can't be fuchsia. What's going to be? Can't be green. Has to be yellow. Yeah, yellow is going to hit yellow. Wait, 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 wait. Uh, We've got, to start, we've got to finish with the greens. Finish with the greens. I know green is here. And um, actually, green shouldn't go here because it's going to mix in too much with the blue. What you're going to have better there going for you is fuchsia. OK. And here. Blue with green will mix in too much, so fuchsia does a much better separation because fuchsia is very pure. 
to any of the reds. Fuchsia has nothing to do with reds. Fuchsia is the last color in the chakra system. A meditation is at the crown of the head. And uh, fuchsia connects with what your idea of what God is. So fuchsia is a very spiritual color, very, very spiritual, very pure. It has nothing to do with reds at all or oranges. In fact, you can't mix it. It just happens. Okay, now we need the blue somewhere. Somewhere. Okay. I know the blue here. Blue there. Too much blue. Let's Okay, you have five minutes. Okay, the blue there. Um, and this here, that here, what was that going to be? Was that going to be orange? No, that was going to be fuchsia. That was going to be fuchsia, right? Fuchsia. No, 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 no. Well, what was it? I'll just make it blue. Got to make it blue. Got to make it blue. Let's make it blue. So that's the thing about the harlequin. You got to know where you're going to put the colors, what you're going to do, what's going to look best. That looks okay. And then we need something there. We're going to go with green. Can't go with green. There's too much green there. Um, we need some fuchsia there, maybe. Uh-huh. Let's go with some fuchsia here. Okay. Oh, uh, it seems, yes, it seems absolutely fabulous. I'm just accenting purple. Oh, wait a minute. And there has to be a yellow there, hon. A yellow about here for it. Yeah, OK, that's fine. Um, got four minutes. We're doing OK. Uh, I just need like a flesh tone. And then um, my flesh tone, my flesh tone is a burnt sienna. Burnt sienna, burnt sienna, where are you? Burn Sienna, the little one. Oh no, that's raw umber. Burn Sienna, right. Yeah. Oh, screwing these things. Okay. The burnt Sienna with a little bit of pinky orange just will tint the hands to where I need them tinted for a little fleshiness. Okay? Uh-huh. We'll tint my hands to the fleshiness and tint her face to the fleshiness that I need right there. We'll just tint, tint, tint. Uh-huh, we just need the tint. Now, we got too much on the hands right now. Okay. All right. Um, perfect, baby. Uh, and then now, honey, hold on, baby. I'm in a panic. Oh, oh, oh. Um, the braid. Okay, the braid. Okay, the braid, the braid, the braid. You got the braid in there. It's like a blonde braid, red braid, or whatever. Okay. Yeah, the braid is in there now. Um, where are we going? Oh, the lips. The lips in a fuchsia tone. See how we're glazing it and it comes out lovely? OK. Now, a little bit of blush. 
will do just fine. Okay, and um, super white highlight. Uh, yeah, super white highlight. Here we go. Uh huh. Super white highlight will be very helpful now. Uh, this brush is dirty with fuchsia, so it's going to be pinky super white highlight. <sighs> okay. Fell to the floor, can't pick it up. Uh, okay. Super white highlight on the mouth. And the moon eyes that I do on these creatures, they have moon eyes. They have these little crests. Though she looks funny. Okay. Oh, and then. Oh, she looks terrible. I gotta erase it before it settles in. Okay. We'll dry it. Oh, we got seconds only. Okay. So, the fluffiness of the boa. Okay. The bones in the hands. Cheekbones, cheekbones, okay. And now this is dry enough where I can put the moon thingies. Perfect. Bones on the hands. Okay. Okay, we're doing well. The gods are with us. Okay, now fluffiness. Fluffiness of uh, ostrich feather. Okay, baby, you guys want this print, honey? If you're one of the seven lucky callers, you're going to have a tolly print. All right. <whistles> got to go. Baby, i got to sign this now. Got to get out of here. T-A-L-I-98. And remember, darlings, it's always going to be me the camera, the canvas, and all you wonderful people out there in the suburbs. After this picture, we'll make a new picture and another picture. I'm ready for my close-up, Mr. DeMills. This is Tolly signing off.